In the last couple of videos, we have learnt about variables and two-way variable binding. We used two-way variable binding to link our input boxes with the variables in our table. This is great because it means whenever our user wants to create a new to-do for the app, they can type into this box and this will create a new to-do inside of the table here. However, if I then refresh the page, you will see that the variable values reset to their original values. This is because the variable values are only being set temporarily in the front end of the app. To set these variables to be permanently stored, we need to have a back end for our app. But what exactly is a back end anyway, and why is it so important in app development? Well, in the simplest of simple terms, the back end is the bit of your app that your users don't normally see. So it's made out of three primary components. First, there are back end actions. These are used to perform certain tasks that need more processing power or that should be done in private and should not be done on the front end of your app. Examples of these types of tasks might be authenticating users of your app signing up new users, or any proprietary calculations that your application might need to run. Second, there is a database. The database will store all of the data that is required for your app. This will include things like your user data, which will be things like usernames, emails, passwords, and so on. And finally, there is a server, which is where your backend actions and database are all installed. So to understand this some more, Let's take a quick look at a real life example. So here is an app that I use all of the time. It's called Udemy. So for those of you who don't know, Udemy is an online e-learning marketplace that connects teachers with students who are looking to learn new subjects. This is a web app because it doesn't just display information. It also has functionality on the back end that enables it to do something concrete, such as create a new course load up course details, pay to take a course, message teachers and students, and so on. So let's say that we go onto the Udemy app and look for a course to study. I'm interested in learning about, say, digital marketing. So I can go here and I can search for a course on digital marketing. When I search for this course, this is going to return a list of courses for digital marketing which I can filter down to say those courses that are free. I can choose this course here and then enroll onto the course. Now, at this point, Udemy is going to automatically collect up some information from me. This information will be things like, what is my username, account number, and the name of the course that I'm taking. This information will then get sent over to the Udemy database where it will be stored. For simplicity's sake, you can imagine the Udemy database as a collection of giant Excel spreadsheets living somewhere that will take this information and store it on these spreadsheets inside of the database. Now, when I log back into Udemy, say in a week's time to start taking the course that I've signed up to, I am able to log back into Udemy and Udemy will retrieve all of the data that is associated with my account. So this is going to include things like my username, account number, and the course that I'm looking to take. So look, here is the course that I've signed up for. So we can build this same type of functionality inside of Didify. To do this, we're going to need to set up a database, a set of backend actions, and then finally deploy our app onto a server. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up a database directly inside Didify in just a few clicks. So for this and a whole lot more, I'll see you in the next lesson.